Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I know that it's only May. And I know that if you have kids or grandkids or neighbor kids or somewhere else, that school is just about to be over for most of us. So you're probably thinking, why on earth are we talking about back to school and in May? Well, <laughs> because if you're in the retail business, which you all are, right, selling on Amazon and other places, then you know that the preparedness for a season starts about one quarter before the actual season starts, at least, right? So today we're, all, it's just about back to school bundles. Why? Because sometimes y'all just need some really good ideas to kickstart your ideas in order to put product on the table. And if you want to get in on the short but very profitable season of back to school products, then this is your chance. Number one, this is a great place to start with bundles because most of the items in back to school bundles are pretty inexpensive. And the sooner you offer them, the better you are. Uh, some schools in the United States specifically are ending in May and go back in late mid to late August. Other school seasons, like here in Michigan, we start after Labor Day and we don't get out till the first or second week of June. So we have a different, we have a longer season with this because some people start back to school shopping at the end of July because their kids are going back to school like in a couple of weeks. And so that's when people start. Then there's colleges and some other things. So we're going to talk all bundle ideas today. So get your pens get your papers, put your idea a hat on because we're going to roll with all of the different ideas today. And I just wanted you to know that this is all bundle ideas. And speaking of bundle ideas, I know several of you, lots of you have emailed like, we just want more bundle ideas. We kind of know how to put a bundle together, but you know, ideas are great. You know, sometimes you just need a springboard. Bundle Ideas Revealed is a series that I completed last year that goes through every season and every different from quarterly to crafting, to all the holidays, spring and fall and Q4 and just evergreen bundles. So if you are interested in all over 200 bundle ideas within this little mini series, go to mommyincome.com forward slash bundle ideas and you're going to read about it. You're going to see about it. And you're going to have over 200 bundle ideas. That's not to mention what you're going to get today. What you're going to get today is just a bunch of back to school ideas that you can create bundles out of looking for that stuff right now. Now, I will tell you it's way easier, way less expensive um, and more advantageous to you to do this wholesale, which is why I'm telling you in May instead of July. If I wanted you to do retail arbitrage bundles, we'd be talking about this in July and August because you cannot sell what's not on the shelf yet. So this is why we want to get a jump start on it and do it ahead of the season so that when your customers are looking to buy back to school items, they just go to Amazon and find your bundles. They don't have to go to Walmart or Staples or uh, all these different places, Target and stuff like that, that offer all this back to school stuff. Instead, they're just going to Amazon. They're picking out what they want and they're moving on with their lives. So you guys are going to be prepared for back to school bundles at the end of this episode. But if you want year round evergreen and holiday style bundles, go to mommyincome.com forward slash bundle ideas and you will have over 200 bundle ideas that you can look for there, and that's awesome. Also, you guys, join the Facebook group. If you're not in the Facebook group already, this is where we make special announcements, talk about events we're going to. I know some of you missed out on last week's event if you were in the Florida area or you lived in the area and you weren't able to attend the live and in-person meetup that we had. It was awesome. I got to meet some of you. It was very exciting, and if you're not in the Facebook group, you're missing out on some of that stuff or at least on our email list in an order to to do that, you can go to the Facebook group, mommyincome.com forward slash join us, and you need a code word. Your code word this week is back to school. That's pretty easy, right? Back to school. So here we go. <clears throat> Why is back to school what I consider a holiday, a season, a time where you can capitalize on product? Um, because it is something that is product based that has very, it's very quick. It's in and out. It's seasonal. And it has a couple of different seasons, a couple of extra things. So it doesn't always have to be an in and out and no one else is purchasing them because people have school and school supplies and things like that year round. And sometimes you run out of those pencils and papers and folders and semesters beginning and end. So we want to make sure that we're keeping these bundles and keeping an eye on them. So what is the back to school season? And back to school 
school season starts in mid-July and it goes usually through the second week of September. Um, sometimes you can get um, the onset uh, all the way through the end of September, which is now the beginning of um, people move sh strictly from back to school to Halloween. It's like the one-two punch. It's like all of a sudden we're back to school, we're getting into the swing of things and you turn around a week later and all of a sudden it's Halloween and we don't know what happened to September. Um, that's kind of what happens in the back to school uh, situation. So you want to be paying attention to the fact that, yes, this is a shorter season. So when we're dealing with a shorter season of products, we want to think wide, not deep. So we don't want to necessarily buy 100, you know, units of a specific bundle and have that out there. Maybe it's we're going to bring five bundles to the table and we're going to maybe do 25 units each of those bundles to see how they go. Especially if you've never done back to school, maybe it's your first time around, you want to start with two or three bundles and see what what happens. The most important thing to keep in mind about bundle research for back to school is looking at previous data. You've got to see what's out there. You've got to see what the competition's bringing to the table, what they had last year, what they're going to, what you're going to anticipate them having this year. And how can your bundle be number one, discovered through all of the uh, other bundles that might be out there. But number two, what are the specific components that you're going to bring to the table that maybe other people don't? So we can all think through like pencils, pens, crayons, writing tablets, you know, things like that, uh, sticky notes, all those different things that people might bring to the table. But some of the stuff we're going to talk about today, um, other people aren't thinking of. And it's because they're not thinking of it, they're not bringing it to the table. They're just thinking school supplies. They're not necessarily thinking about all of the other things that go into going to back to school. So today is your wonderful lesson of back to school bundles. The next thing that you want to remember about back to school bundles is sometimes less is more. A lot of times people think, gosh, I want to put 10 different things into this bundle and I'm going to make it the best there is and all this stuff. And yes, that could be. Uh, but the reality is don't to put too many things into your bundle. All the, otherwise, you're, you're starting to phase out your, the majority of your customers. And remember, that your bundle doesn't have to be the only thing people are buying at the moment. They might buy your bundle because it has four out of the 10 things they need and then they're gonna have to seek for the other 10. The reality is you will never know all 10 items that your customer needs. You cannot necessarily anticipate that unless you're curating a bundle for a very specific event or purpose, you have to make assumptions, you have to guess. So your typical elementary kid might need some markers, some crayons, a glue stick or, or 10, <laughs> um, safety scissors, these kinds of things. But if you're a mom like me, then she was in elementary school last year, her safety scissors still work, we maybe need some, you know, so we don't need an extra pair of those, instead we need these other things. So everyone's in a different situation and what, what would we need extra? So these are things you wanna consider and I would say, four to five items in your bundle max and make smaller bundles, but that are also very um, advantageous for your customer as well. If you have too many items in the bundle, then make two bundles and name them something different. So if this is the elementary school bundle that you're putting together and it has all the writing utensils, then maybe it has all the writing utensils and nothing else. It's got markers, crayons, expo markers, or whiteboard markers, which are hugely popular, the skinny ones and the fat ones. Um, maybe it's the number two pencils, maybe something, it's just like the writing utensils. So crayons, markers, blah, blah, blah. And then maybe the next one is folders and notebooks or writing tablets and sticky notes or something like that to where you're categorizing the products within the product. So this is a bundle of just the coloring type of utensils. Then the other one's just for the writing stuff. So you've got two different bundles. Could you make all of those into one? Sure. But then you're going to start phasing out some of the customers that might buy one or the other. You've got to just make those decisions up front. Also, another new thing to really consider is that a lot of the nation, due to the pandemic, and this is global now, um, due to the pandemic from years past, I know that we're kind of over the hump of that in, in the moment, you know, still being careful and all those things, but um, virtual school has not gone away. As a matter of fact, it's more common now because of the pandemic, because schools were forced to figure it out. They were forced to figure out virtual um, learning. 
And because of that, those demand for those products that help virtual learning, those have not gone away either. So things like headphones and webcams and laptop desks and surge protectors, microphones, headphones, um, earbuds, external hard drives, mouse pads, notebooks, you know, things like that, things that are very computer or virtual learning um, that are advantageous for that. So those situations. So you have multiple niches within back to school that you can hit as well. But don't count those things out. They're a little bit more expensive, but you can have a virtual learning back to school bundle that includes some of those things that you might need in those types of environments. To where if, you're, if your child is setting up for a virtual school situation, what are the things that they're going to need at home that will make, them e it'll make it easier for them? So thinking about sound and lighting or um, a camera and a place to store a laptop, maybe it's laptop bags, you know, things like that that maybe we didn't consider until high school or college in years past. Now elementary students are even um, doing virtual learning in some form or another, and they still need all of these supplies. They just have them at home which also leads to more organization. If your child did not previously have a virtual desk that they could work for at home, then all of a sudden the pandemic kind of forced the issue. Where are you going to work quietly and on your own? To where at school, they provide you a desk and a space for your belongings. And if you don't have a similar workstation at home, then those are also products that you can bring to the table for your bundles. So those, that's an idea for the virtual learning back to school that we have. Um, and then moving into other things. So of course we know the pens, pencils, mechanical pencils, writing utensils, things like that. And also looking for wholesale opportunities for these. Even middleman, if I, if I must say. Here's an example. Crayola uses distributors. So you don't go to Crayola.com and open up a wholesale account with Crayola.com in the traditional way. That actually that I'm aware of. I know the Crayola is a huge company and they have their products in almost every store. It's a very widely known company. Everybody knows what Crayola crayons are and that's just the way they are. But you don't have to go there and spend tens of thousands of dollars on all that stuff either. Well, something you could do would be buying a case of Crayola crayons, say, from Dollar Tree or from another smaller vendor that has those types of items. I mean, you can get them for wholesale, but if you're not going to carry them year round and they are a meltable product, so that's another thing you have to think about when it comes to crayons. Um but it's something to think about as far as saying, hey, can I get this in larger quantities that will save me money? Say a case of maybe uh, 25 of them you could get from Dollar Tree versus getting those from Crayola themselves. And then they might say you have to order a thousand packs of crayons for it to be worth it. So there are other ways to bring temporary bundles to or seasonal bundles without kind of breaking the bank when it comes to the wholesale orders either. So consider those options when it comes to those things. But I want to talk a little bit more about back to school bundles that maybe everyone's not thinking of. The pens, the paper, the crayons, the writing stuff, all of that stuff is something that people are mostly thinking about for back to school. But we're going to talk about uniforms. That's the next thing that we're talking about here is uniforms. People wear, there's a lot of children, a lot of schools, a lot of places in the U.S. that require uniforms to go to school. And they're simple products, but it's something you can put together if you have a, a younger child or older child or something. Um, there's their, their polo shirts. There's um, the Oxford type button down shirts, khaki pants, jumpers skirts, socks. Um, these are the things to very typical. They're white or light blue or navy blue, and they're very uniform for a reason. The thing is, is when you wear a uniform every single day or you have a couple of shirts you're rotating from, they wear out quickly. And so people want extras. If you wear the same white polo shirt, and if anybody has kids, first of all, why did we choose white for uniforms? Please tell me. Someone out there, please tell me why the uniform colors for elementary students are white and light blue. They are messy. They're dirty. They get stuff on their shirts. They write on their hands. They've got pen and paper and they've got all kinds of stains. Like, why can't we have, why, why couldn't we have chose a darker color that was easier to get stuff out of? Anyway, I know bleach, right? But still, the reality is they get stuff very uh, dirty. And so I would never have chosen those colors. I'd be like, let's give them something that um, washes really well. Anyway, um, these are things that you can put into bundles. You can put a five pack of white 
polo shirts size 8, 10 for boys or girls um, or either one into a bundle and it will sell. Why? Because there are plenty of moms out there looking for, I just need five of these. We're going to start out the year with five of them. At least we have one for every day. If I don't have to, if I don't do the laundry till Sunday, we always have a backup, right? So there you have it. That's a bundle that you can put together that are, is, is really pretty easy. Now, some people might ask, why not the pants and the shirts together? Why just shirts or why shirts? And Well, here's the reason. Anybody, sometimes if you have children or even my own self, you're a different size on top than you are on bottom for whatever reason. So it's not just simply um, my toddler's five and they wear a size five shirt and a size five pants and a size five. It just doesn't work that way. Some people have bigger feet. Sometimes they have bigger waists and they have, you know, it, it doesn't matter. So I always like to put shirts together and bottoms together um, in a different way. Because if you wear a size five pants, then you wear a size five pants and your pants are size five. And if you're buying five of the same pair, makes sense, right? So um, that's it, it reduces the return rate as well on clothing when you don't group things like pants and shirts together. Like sometimes we did this like probably four years ago or so and it was for toddlers and it was like a shirt and pants and that was the number one complaint. So I learned that the hard way um, was that like, well, the shirt fits great, but these pants are too big or they're too long or they're too something. So I thought, if you have a return for just the pants, that's fine. If you have a return for just the shirts, but selling them together, they might like one thing and not another. And sometimes they only send back the one thing. You know how it is. So try to group things together. Socks and socks. Uh, shirts with other shirts that are similar or alternating colors or variations. Jumpers, pants, you know, bottoms and tops separately. Um, and other things that people buy back to school. Socks, underwear, shoes, kid, buying kids they're new sets of school clothes every single year. It's like we're at a new year. There's new trends. We need to see what fits and what doesn't fit. And it's a really good opportunity to sell those things in with or without bundles. If you know, you know, there's shoes that you have access to or certain um, underwear, socks, you know, all that kind of stuff. And yes, I'm thinking children because of back to school. But don't forget college and high school and all of that. I have elementary on the brain or actually middle school this year because my youngest is going to middle school. So um, I am moving into that direction, which brings me to some other things like locker decorations. Now, y'all, when I was in middle school and high school, we had some stuff inside of our locker, maybe a mirror, maybe something else to just be like, okay, it's fine. But we didn't really like go all out decorating our lockers. And now it's like a thing. Kids are putting magnets on them and they're putting little in inspirational quotes and signs and they've got everything from hooks and extra magnetic organizers that go in there and shelf uh, shelves. Uh, my daughter's like, I want a locker shelf, a locker shelf. Okay, great. She just is so excited to have a locker that she doesn't even know what to do with it. And so those are also things that people use in high school, middle school or wherever they have lockers, locker decorations and locker decor and locker things like that. So that's just another way to put your personality stamp on something uh, like your locker. So don't forget about different aspects of back to school. Instruments, um, band members. There's lots of band members that go back to school this time of year. They're starting band for the first time. They're in marching band. They're in jazz band. They're in something. And musical instruments and their parts and their carrying cases and their uh, accessories are also back to school items. Musical instruments. How about sports? Don't forget sporting goods back to school. Football is huge in the fall, both all the way from, you know, peewee football in the elementary and, and even, I want to say toddlers, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, all the way up until college, all of this gear, all of these things all have to be sold and people start doing that. So that goes along with back to school. New alumni, there are going to be new people going to University of Michigan this year. And yes, I chose that because that is our the school of choice that we support. So people are going back to school and they're going to be um, U of M for the first time. They're going to the college for the first time. And now they're going to want to have that gear. So keeping those things in mind is also important. And speaking of college, anything for a dorm room. If your child is going from moving to their bedroom to a college dorm room and not having access to all the other things, there's a whole boatload of products that you can offer to them. First time apartment type stuff or little caddies to go from the dorm room to the bathroom that's down the community bathroom that's down the hall. 
um, sheets, towels, posters, sticky tack, thumbnail, um, thumbtacks, storage bins, snack packs, college survival snack packs. You know that hangry kit I'm always talking to you guys about or like the snack hut box? You know, those are things that parents like to send to their kids at college to make sure they have enough to eat and they have snacks and you know, things like that. Um, non-perishable items um, or your items like um, shampoo and conditioners and things like that. Convenient packs for toiletries. Um, carrying cases for toiletries. Like right now, your shampoo and conditioner resides in the bathroom that you live in. But when you go to college and you're sharing a community bathroom, you have to carry a little bag or a tote that has all of your personal belongings in it to the bathroom, use it, take your shower, do whatever, and then you have to bring those things back. So what are products that would make that easy and convenient to have a community bathroom? These are things we think about. Also snack packs for college, things like that are like microwavable items, items that are easy to store in smaller spaces. How about bicycles, bikes and accessories? A lot of people take a bike to college and you know they, they need a new lock, they need a, a bike accessory pack, maybe they're buying a bike for the first time because they don't want to take a car. Um, laptop accessories, these are all bundle ideas. Like all I have to say is laptop accessories. And then you can go do a Google search. You can do an Amazon search. You can run it through the framework and figure it out of which, what to bundle with what. These are just ideas of where you can take the first idea and what products you have access to. So when I say storage containers and storage bins, uh, use Pinterest. That's my number one place to look for different ideas of products to put together is if you look at Pinterest and you say small space storage ideas, AKA a dorm room, or just flat out use dorm room, you know, dorm room accessories, dorm room storage ideas, and then look at what Pinterest has and look at the products, put the products together in a bundle, sell it on Amazon. I mean, y'all think it's rocket science sometimes. Um, and sometimes we just, our brains overthink and overthink because sometimes it's like, it can't be this easy. Can it? I can, can it be this easy? Can it be, okay, laptop accessories, laptop bag, um, wireless mouse, um, battery pack charger, something, I don't know about the battery pack charger, but like there's thinking off the top of my head of like what goes with the situation, file folders that match a notebook, that match a sticky notes that have some coordinating pens. That's a great stationary set, great for back to school. Um, planners, a lot of people buy what they call school year planners where they start in July and end in May or something like that. Um, it's like a diff, it's an alternative calendar, but it starts with the school year and continues on. So looking at, um, calendars and planners and things like that, surge protectors, matching stationary kits, organizational tools for the office supplies that you have, because transitioning from high school to college is a big transition in life. You don't realize what you need until you don't have it. And you don't realize that you don't have it because you've always had it in your house. And now you're stuck in a room and like, oh my gosh, I don't have the things I need. So stocking some of those things, even beyond the, pa the, the back to school time period is super helpful. Okay. Um, and don't forget, mommyincome.com forward slash bundle ideas. If you want other bundle ideas, year round, evergreen, plus holiday bundle ideas, bundle uh, ideas um, like this and more. And and that one actually comes with the slideshow and presentation and shows you visuals of, of all that. So this is just kind of your um, weekly episode. But those uh, trainings, those bundle idea trainings, they really help solidify visually. And um, it, it, I've even taken images for uh, retail arbitrage bundles. Like these don't all have to be wholesale. A lot of them can be retail arbitrage bundles. The difference there is the time and speed in which you have to wait until that store puts out their product for you to even create the bundles. So that's always the hardest part. And then you hope that you can get them in on time. Amazon checks them in on time and you can still sell them. That is my nervousness about retail arbitrage bundles in this um, and seasonal stuff is timing is everything. If you don't get them in on time, no one's going to buy them. So that is the, the the hardest part about doing retail arbitrage bundles. This is why we're talking about this in May and not July. <laughs> um, okay, look at college prep section for major retailers. Look for look at Bed Bath and Beyond, Staples, Office Depot, um, Target. All your major stores are going to have a section for back to school eventually. So if you're doing retail arbitrage bundles, that's a good idea. 
Okay, let's talk about high school specifically. Locker accessories. Look at the school supply list. Did y'all know that almost every school produces this on a yearly basis of what the students are going to need and be required? And a lot of parents print that out and take it to the store and take their kid to the store and they have to pick out all the stuff. And then there's people like me that I look at the list, I find bundles on Amazon, I order them and I show my daughter two weeks in advance what of this do you, you need all this stuff? And then I let her pick out a couple of things that she like likes. But other than that, these are like the required items. I don't want to go to the store and hunt these things down. I'm an Amazon buyer. I just am. Um, athletic gear, sporting sports in the fall, find a mock list online of like your typical high school or whatever um, niche that you're going to target. You don't have to target all the niches. If you have a high schooler and you know exactly what's required of them, do a high school. If you know college, you've learned a thing about putting kids through college, then use a college list. If you've got young kids, great. If you have preschoolers, they're still back to school for preschoolers. They need, they all need backpacks and probably a, a, like for three-year-olds, I always think they have to have an extra bag in their bag in case they have a, a potty accident and then you have to put the change of clothes in there and the wet clothes. We were always required to send something like that to preschool. Um, so that was interesting. <clears throat> Headphones, graphic calculators, um, accessories for other classes. These are things that people buy on a regular basis and things we want to, to sell elementary school specifically let's run through this list clorox wipes now that's controversial on amazon because some people say it gets wiped with hazmat some people say it's been hazmat cleared some people you know all that kind of stuff i don't sell clorox wipes at all but it's something that's always on the list for elementary school tissues uh clorox wipes classroom packs teachers need these like they'll they'll be like please send in a five pack of clorox wipes <laughs> or um, you know folders uh, baggies lunch baggies snack baggies lunch kits uh, lunch boxes, anything that goes inside a lunch box, like thermoses, water bottles, extra um, metal straws, and those little pipe cleaners that clean them. I mean, any of the, and, oh, the struggle is real. Bento boxes. In, um, what's the other one I'm thinking of? Um, oh, yeah, like ice packs, things like that. Um, teacher of the year, stuff for teachers, stuff for classrooms for the teachers. Teachers decorate bulletin boards and their whiteboards, whiteboard markers, um, all of that kind of stuff. You could even, like back to school could be, here's your back to school bulletin board kit for teachers. Are you a next teacher? Are you a current teacher? Or is that something you, you know about? And what do all, what are the products that teachers use? A teacher's aides, people that, that do volunteer work, the secretary, everybody in the school system from the principal to the janitor is going back to school. They all buy products every day or weekly. Most of them buy them on Amazon. So your opportunity to bring bundles to specific groups of people is just starts with thinking. It starts with who do I want to serve and when? And right now it's we want to serve back to school people starting in July. <laughs> so we're thinking about them today. And teachers, uh, character themes for backpacks and lunch boxes and pencil cases and thermoses and ice packs and crafting supplies. Crafting supplies for specific holidays, like for when teachers are like, okay, we're going to make a, I don't know, Halloween's coming up and we're all going to make a jack-o'-lantern that, you know, has like glued on pieces or whatever. Y'all heard of Oriental trading. Um, okay, so look there for bundle ideas and bundle opportunities. Grocery category. My last and final category to talk about back to school is in the snack and grocery category. Granola bars and shopping for sales and putting out variety packs. Um, these are in, these are very convenient food products that parents like to use to pack lunches. We will have a brief three month off of packing lunches and snacks for our children. You know, <laughs> I say that so reluctantly. Yay. Make your own lunch. No, I'm just kidding. I'm talking really about like that we, we packing lunches. So a lot of, um, parents are packing lunches on a regular basis and very pre-wrapped, um, convenient snacks and toiletries and, you know, K cups and anything mini for college students, do it yourself, snack packs, microwavable meals, um, all these kind of things all these kind of things, anything that brings convenience 
to a family that's trying to navigate however many kids going back to school in different places and different after school activities. Oh, speaking of after school activities, another thing that goes along with starting up in the fall too is all activities start at back up, including sports. But when I say sports, I also mean things like dance classes and cooking classes and you know, all the different things that are in your community brochures that you're always saying your kids can take this or that class or this group and that club and all the things that that's very regular for this time of year. Um, talk about don't even get me started on the ballet dance tights. Just just we can't even go there. I, I should buy stock in ballet tight companies, you know, because they rip whether they cost twenty five dollars or five dollars. <laughs> tights um, for a ballerina are, are a very a pain point. So if someone has a, a solution to that problem, that would be great. Um, but that's the idea there is every year I'm buying two or three pairs and sometimes half the way through the season, they outgrow them and you need something else. So always keeping these things in mind. Back to school is a plethora of ideas, but you've got to narrow it down and decide what is the easiest category to you for you to serve based on your own knowledge bank. I'm going, <clears throat> if I was doing back to school bundles this year, which actually I'm not because we tied up all of our budget for um, Q4 um, for holiday bundles specifically, we almost, we, we haven't done back to school in a while. Um, we just choose to skip that one because we want to secure all of our funds for, um, we've got, gotten really good at Halloween. And so we really focus our Q4 funding on Halloween and Christmas and Thanksgiving. Those are our biggest holidays that we love to sell through and we've got it kind of down to a science. So we choose to skip back to school, which is, I mean, could be our, to our own detriment. I'm sure we could make more money there, but that's why I'm just giving you guys all the great ideas. Um, because some of you love back to school time and, or it's just a, it's a very profitable, um, season. And so I encourage you to try a couple of back to school bundles, um, but just whatever level of expertise you feel like you're at or a level of knowledge. Um, if you just sent some kids off to college, you're going to have more knowledge in that area of what they needed and didn't need and listening to their pain points when they come back. You know, if they're coming back to visit for the weekend and they say, oh, I wish we had this at school or we don't have this. Pay attention. Those are products that solve problems for college kids. So thinking, asking, and if it's elementary, because that's the kids, the age of your children or even younger or older, or you don't have any children. If you don't have any children, maybe you can focus on, were you ever a teacher? Did you, did you know a teacher? All the different things. There's always a role to play in back to school when it comes to that. If you're a clothing expert, do the, the do those. If you're already selling grocery items, then just think outside the box a little bit and think what would be the most convenient for, I mean, I'm talking weekly too. Think about this. So let's talk about grocery for a second. And if there was a bundle out there that was like the mom's elementary school, like snack pack bundle, where it could give me like five of these granola bars and five of these things and this, and it was something I could just repeat weekly and just buy it as my regular grocery delivery, except for every week it delivered me the exact number of snacks that my younger one needed to put in her lunchbox. And I could just open the lunchbox and be like, pick one from here, here, and here. This is, you're packing your own lunch. I mean, that would be brilliant. And then you, it's just something that someone has to do the work to do, but like the, the elementary school snack pack and like, oh my gosh, send me one of those. And it would be easy to just be like, here's your snacks for the week. All good. They're all categorized Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, that'd be great. I'm like literally creating my own bundle as we're talking, but, um, the reality there, it just, I know I got to stop saying that, don't I? I say that all the time because there's so many different realities that we have to come to. We have a million different ideas and we have to rein it in. And here's how I'm going to rein it in for you. Focus on just a few bundles in a few specific categories. Serve what you know most about, whether that's clothing or grocery or a specific school or, or the teachers or whatever it is. Just stay really focused and maybe don't create more than three bundles. No more than four or five items in a bundle and just see what happens. Set a budget, set a time where you're going to execute these and send them out. Um, now is a time to get a lot of these stuff wholesale instead of waiting for retail arbitrage for the stuff to be on the shelf. Now, if you don't wait for the sales, we do realize that almost every single thing for back to school is still available to purchase right now today. It's just not on sale or it's not being talked about, but it's still in the stores. You can go in and look. So 
paying attention to some of those things um, and start now. Don't start in mid-July. Start now. Because in mid-July is when people are starting to shop for these items. If you're going to sell backpacks and lunchboxes, get them sooner than later so that they're available to buy when people start shopping. Don't start thinking when your shoppers are thinking. You have to think before them so that you can get yourself on the shelf so that when they're ready to walk in, aka uh, look at up your stuff on Amazon, that, that you already have it ready. So be ready. Stay ready. Get ready so you don't have to get ready in the moment. So that is your back to school bundles all the way from preschool to elementary school, high school, college, and beyond. This is plenty of ideas for any of you to run with and go start creating bundles now so they're available for your shoppers. Don't forget, we have over 200 evergreen and holiday bundles in the Bundle Ideas Revealed series. The series is available for purchase right now at mommyincome.com forward slash bundle ideas. So if you're looking for more bundle ideas, more, and this is a comprehensive step-by-step -step showing you where the bundles are, what categories, um, there's visuals for everything. Um, get the Bundle Ideas Revealed series because it's really awesome. It's helped so many people just um, be the, it's like the trampoline of your ideas. You just bounce your ideas off of this and you go, ah, you have your aha moments and you know the next bundle you're going to create. Uh, bundle Ideas Revealed is really just your jump start for that. So um, check it out at mommyincome.com slash bundle ideas. And I will see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.